Okay class, so let's proceed to module 2. So the crimes under module 2 are not too important, you know, I, if I must say, you know. Um, these are crimes that most probably will not be committed in your lifetime, no? So these are not too common crimes, but you know, we don't um neglect these crimes just because they are not familiar or not as famous as rape but um because of the very limited time that we have no i will just explain it in its general concept no i will not dwell so much on these crimes because as i said earlier no these crimes are not that important or not very common but at least um, God forbid this will be asked during the bar, board exam, no? the um, criminology board exam. Then you might have a, um, what do you call that, um, intellectual guess. No? You might have a, an informed guess when you um, try to answer the questions. Um, so under module 2, we have four crimes. No? Um, the first crime is inciting to war or giving motives of reprisal. That's under Article 118 of the Revised Penal Code. And then the next crime is under Article 119, violation of neutrality. And then Article 120 um, pertains to correspondence with um, hostile country. And then Article 121, flight to enemy's country. Okay, so let's... Um, go back to Article 118, so or Article 118, inciting to war or giving motives of reprisal. Okay, you need to understand that um, from the word inciting, no, uh, inciting meaning um, you are provoking, no, you are trying to provoke um, two countries to engage into war. Kung baga, um, pinag-aaway mo ang dalawang bansa no if um, if we just apply it in our um day-to-day -day activity or day-to-day -day life para uh, ikaw yung cause bakit nag-aaway yung magkakaibigan no so you incite them you provoke them into engaging into war okay so with that um this crime is committed during the time of peace because if they are if the two countries are already at war then you cannot provoke them you cannot incite them to go into war so uh, because they are already into war okay so what do you mean by inciting to war you do um, you done something no that will cause the other country to hate your country okay a good example here is that um a Filipino individual went to Hong Kong and then there in Hong Kong um, he caused uh, he burned no he burned the Hong Kong na um, flag okay or he went to China and deface damage destroy a important monument no and he brings the name of the um, country Philippines like he made a public announcement or public statement that his acts is sanctioned by um, the Philippine government where in fact it is not true okay so because of that action alone no, it might provoke China to get angry again uh, with us no, in the Philippines and start a war so that is an example of inciting to war or giving motives of rep reprisal meaning reprisal um, paghihiganti no? like for example if one of our big uh, okay one of our biggest um, import product in China is the banana okay let's say banana is very important in the economy of China and we the Philippines is the major producer and major exporter of bananas in China and if you are the one who controls the banana export here in the Philippines and you um, you suddenly cut the the supply of banana to China just to incite, just to make China angry um, with Philippines, then you might be held guilty under Article 118. Okay, so that's very simple. Then violation of neutrality. Okay, um, it means that there are neutrality, meaning wala kang pinapanigan, diba? That's being neutral. For example, two of your friends are... Um, angry with each other you are neutral meaning hindi ka nag 
hindi ka kumampi kahit kang kahit kanino okay so in this case um let's say philippines okay philippines and then there japan and china is at war okay japan and china is at war and then you are a filipino citizen you are or a foreigner so joining here in the country and you um supported china against japan okay you provide ammunition provide um tactical gears provide money to finance the war so it means to say that you are favoring china and you are um breaching your uh, the country's stance or uh, stance against um uh, Uh, stands between the war of Japan and China. So you are breaching, no? You are breaching, you are violating the neutrality of Philippines between the Japan and China um, war. These are all example, okay, class? I would like to emphasize because it happened before that my one of my students thought that China and Japan is at war because I gave an example like this, okay? So, make your uh, please um, exercise common sense no and as a future police officer no you are also you need to be abreast with the current information or current events meaning you should know the news okay you should the, know the news the current trends um, not only in the philippines but also in the world economy world peace or world uh, peace and order situation okay so you need to be involved in the things like that because um, your examiner in the future for your future board exam might get some questions out of those current events okay so you need to be abreast with the um, news that are circulating right now okay so violation of neutrality very easy to understand again philippines is a neutral country meaning walang pinapanigang ang bansa no if there are two two or more countries that is at, that are at war between between or among each other and then you um, a filipino citizen or a foreigner so joining here in the philippines um supported one of the um, um parties to the war then you are violating the neutrality provision or neutrality um stance of the philippines so you might be held liable under article 119 Then Article One Twenty Correspondence with Hostile Country. What do you mean by correspondence? Okay, sulat, no, sumulat ka. You make an email, you make a Facebook Messenger message, or whatever means of electronic communication or written communication or any kind of in um transfer of data. It might be through analog, no, through a code, through a um. Whatever, whatever kind of um, transfer of information, because that is correspondence, no? Okay, you are trying to communicate with um, the hostile country. Okay, however, jurisprudence provide that correspondence should pertain to what we call um, um, not. Uh, uh, I mean, the correspondence or the information. Con- in your correspondence with a hostile country must contain noti- notice or information which might be helpful um, to the enemy country okay so hindi lahat ng correspondence for example for example again Philippines and China is, is, are at war against each other okay and then you have a girlfriend there in China and then you wrote a love letter to your um, girlfriend or boyfriend for Okay, so, and then, um, even if we are at war, and then if your letter to your um, partner, to your spouse, to your boyfriend, girlfriend, pertains um, solely and exclusively on your personal matter, and it does not contain any information that might be helpful, um, for, uh, might be helpful for China and is adverse against the Philippines, then you cannot be held guilty under this article. Okay, I hope you understand. It's very simple and easy. Okay, then flight to enemy's country. Okay, from the title itself, you can guess what the crime is all about. Flight. So you go to the enemy country. Okay, like for example, Philippines and China is at war. No, in our example, Philippines and China is at war. Then the Philippine government made an express declaration. Okay, 
uh, prohibiting travel going to the enemy country. Okay, there must be an um, there must be an order. Um, by a, the competent authority, maybe through our president, through an executive order, or through a law passed by Congress, no, um, prohibiting any flight towards or going to the enemy country. And even with that proclamation or order, you still violated such order, then you can be held liable under Article 181. Okay? That's all about module 2. It's very short and very simple. I hope um, you understand the gist of all those crimes. Okay? So, thank you.